Kit Gurus with EKWB at CES 2023, and here's the sign to prove it. As we move through the room, it will be revealed that EKWB has suffered a minor catastrophe. Some of their products haven't arrived. Happily, many of their PCs have. There are three PCs in this suite built by Stuart Tonks of GGF. This is, you'll be shocked to learn, all about gold. We've known for a good long while that EK will offer gold as one of the finishes on their fittings. And here's the evidence. However, here we also have some gold RAM. You don't see that very often. In fact, you won't see it outside of this PC. This is a Lian Li V3000 chassis. There are two more systems built in the same chassis. This is the let's just absolutely go for it bling version. Quite remarkable. Surprisingly, having seen the gold Good Lord PC, this GGF build in the white chassis is actually somewhat more special. This version of the chassis was specially built for Stuart by Lian Li. The white is a version we might see coming to market, in which case it will be the GGF or Stuart Tonks special Lian Li V3000. If you come in, Luke, we can see that at first glance it appears there are two systems in this case. We were both of us fooled by this mirror. What it does for ventilation to the power supply, we don't like to think. However, let's go beyond that. This looks absolutely remarkable. Clean doesn't begin to describe it. Quite clearly, all the plumbing feeds through to the back side of the system. The CPU block is EK quantum magnitude. The GPU block is a quantum vector squared. The GPU block is an EK quantum vector. That's on an ASUS graphics card. The radiator, of which we're only seeing the edge, is a mighty quantum surface P480M, obviously in white. It so happens the fans in this build are by Lian Li, it being a Lian Li chassis. However, if we move to the table, we do come to some EK fans. These are the new loop models, as shown here on the Nucleus AIO that James is currently reviewing. The key feature here being they are chainable, daisy chain. The block connector, eight pin, actually handles both RGB and PWM. And then when we come to the end of the line, we have a dongle that splits off to go to the standard RGB and PWM headers. In other words, you don't need a special control unit. At the business end, it is not proprietary. The fans run up to 2,300 RPM. We'll come back to this table in just a second. There's a build across here by Andy, the lab, which features nine fans all running flat out at 2,300 RPM, just to demonstrate they're not particularly noisy. I'll hold the mic to the case. Clearly audible, but nine fans running past 2,000 would normally be a racket. The distro plate is a quantum reflection with an LCD screen at the bottom. That's a brand new feature. The graphics block is an EK quantum vector on an RX 7900 XTX. The CPU monoblock is part and parcel of the EK quantum MSI MPG X670E. The processor under there, an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. And this is a third Stuart Tonks build in a Lian Li V3000. Full EK hardware. The vertical GPU standing at the front looks just absolutely mind-blowing. There's a huge amount of space in this chassis, but it's been packed out with hardware. The theme for the first build by Stuart Tonks was gold. Clearly here, the theme is copper. Might potentially be bronze, but those tubes are certainly copper. Absolutely lovely. Amazingly tidy. Loads of modded parts. Returning to the table where we saw the loop fans and the nucleus AIO, we have various odds and ends, including some quantum surface radiators that Kitger has previously featured, amazingly popular with our audience. We also have a couple of manifolds for uh, graphics cards. The idea with this hardware is to demonstrate the virtues of an active backplate on your graphics card. As we know with these 250 and 300 watt graphics cards, the back of the GPU also gets toasty. They haven't told us why they've included a revised pressure tester, but we assume the logic is always check the pressure of your loop or check your loop will hold pressure before you fill it with coolant. That way you avoid catastrophe. 
This velocity squared block looks on the face of it to be quite conventional. However, it is the only block of its type in this suite because it supports AMD AM5, which means you're using the back plate that comes with your motherboard. So the stock back plate remains in place and you drop your velocity block on your AMD AM5 processor. James is currently reviewing a Nucleus AIO. His initial reports are that it's uh, an incredibly good piece of kit. Uh, therefore, I have not experienced the packaging. James has merely shown me some photos. This is the package that comes with the Nucleus, including all the fixtures and fittings, which, to be honest, is a lot more swish than your standard bag of stuff. That's a really smart touch. This particular cooler is the Nucleus CR240. James has the 360 on test. As you'd expect, he wants maximum cooling. Very nifty piece of equipment. The feature there being the high-end hardware combined with loop fans and the ability to daisy chain them together. And here we have two PCs from the EK Fluid Gaming catalog. These are PCs that are pre-built by EK, currently on sale in the US. However, expect them to go on sale across the EU and the UK in the nearish future. EK Fluid Gaming 190 Battle is based on an AIO cooler and as you can see heaps of RGB within the Lian Li chassis. This is the O11D case that we've previously reviewed and liked a great deal. This is an all AMD build so the processor is a Ryzen 9 7950X, graphics are RX 7900 XTX and the cooler on the processor is the Nucleus CR360, as previously discussed and currently being reviewed by James. EK Fluid Gaming Dragon's Blood. We've got a monoblock on the processor, full custom loop. The reservoir in the front of the chassis is a quantum reflection distro plate, also by EK, and that has a D5 pump. The fittings are EK Quantum Torque, and the fans are the new EK Loop. The radiator in the roof of the case is a quantum surface P360M and that will absolutely carry enough fluid to keep the system cool. The graphics card here is an ASUS Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 4090. As you can see it has active backplate cooling. So fluid's going in on one side of the GPU and coming out on the other to keep both sides of the graphics nice and cool. Still here at the EK booth. Leo's handed the microphone over to me because this is a bit more industrial, shall we say. Well, industrial, expensive. What do we have here? This big beast is running, actually, Threadripper Pro. So I have to be honest, I was quite surprised when they said it's Threadripper Pro. We're talking half a terabyte of memory. Of course, Threadripper Pro 64 core. We've got four GPUs in there at the moment. They're NVIDIA A6000 GPUs. However, with these quick disconnect cables, the chassis can actually take seven GPUs in total, or kind of caveat, it can take eight and then daisy chain out to effectively an eGPU type box which can handle another five GPUs on an external box. So you're probably thinking at this point, how on earth do you power this thing? Around the back we've got dual 1600 watt power supplies, not for redundancy, in teamed mode. So you're talking over three kilowatts worth of power to go through with this beast. But of course, being Threadripper Pro, it's somewhat conventional, I want to say somewhat off-the-shelf hardware. What EK is doing here is effectively putting their own special source in there so that you can buy a box that is very well cooled for copious amounts of compute hardware. And what's the use case here? Well, I guess if you're someone like, I don't know, maybe Pixar or some other big animation, video editing, that type of company, the cost of ownership for this can be really pretty good. We're talking about numbers, something like maybe three months ROI versus a cloud alternative. So yeah, even though this is gonna be ridiculously expensive, the ROI, the return on investment can be pretty slick indeed. I actually thought it was gonna be kind of like a link plate like we've seen with some multi GPU setups, but instead we've got seven quick disconnect points. At one point the NV link has been forgotten. Uh, some trade show technicality, shall we say. Now we have a more compact version of what we've just seen, but it's slightly different because here we're running proper enterprise level hardware, we're running Epic there. Uh, we've got four GPUs in this system and they can be standard GPUs, something like an RTX 4090, 3090 if you want. You can get a bunch of M.2 SSDs in there, I think it's a couple of M.2, and you can get some flash storage on the front side. Importantly, this is more compact as you can actually see. So if you're doing on-location video work, perhaps live sports, live entertainment, if you're a DJ in a facility, this is probably what you're going to be looking at in certain high-end applications. Of course, 
you know, it has the benefits versus once again the cloud infrastructure because you've got local powerhouse hardware. Who is this going to be interesting for? Well, I don't know, maybe someone like uh, Blackmagic if you're a professional video editor or you're doing that type of work. And if you want to just come in here, we've got what is effectively, I'm going to oversimplify this massively because it's effectively kind of somewhat similar to EK Connect, but this is almost a motherboard dedicated to system control. So you've got individual fan control, pump control. We can tell if one of the fans is burnt out, for example, specifically which fan. You've got the ability to control the system, turn it off, turn it on. You've got pump level control, flow level. There's a lot that can go on here. Yes, this is in the professional, very much professional workspace, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like this come into the consumer side of things very soon, because that is a pretty interesting piece of infrastructure, I want to say. Skipping past this $60,000 dual Epic Milan X multi-GPU server, what we have here is an actual PC. I'm just going to switch the microphone, pick this up. I'm glad I've been going to the gym recently because it's actually genuinely pretty heavy. But this is effectively a slab of cooling. And what is it? Well, underneath here, you've got a real legit Core i9. So actually powerful hardware in there for automotive usage. So this can be effectively a plug and play type system. You've got connectivity. I'm just going to put it down before I slipped out my hand. You've got connectivity there for handling things like uh, your sensors in your autonomous vehicles, perhaps even your media output if you wanted to do that type of thing. If I'm someone like Audi or some other car manufacturer, I can come and buy this off the shelf and then I can plumb it into my conventional cooling system or I can use the EK supplied hardware. You can obviously do heat scavenging, that type of stuff, if you really want to integrate it. But effectively, this is some pretty powerful hardware for the electric vehicle sector. There's effectively a plug and play type solution. There is talk of this being upgraded too. Perhaps some of the AMD FPGAs that we've seen mentioned recently, perhaps some higher end hardware. So you've got all those sensor input data, so LiDAR, camera, all that ultrasonic type information can go in without putting too much stress on the internal GPU that can handle the other side of things. So a pretty cool different domain that's our look at the new EK hardware here in their booth in Las Vegas for CES 2023. Some pretty cool stuff here, some fancy builds, some more fancy builds, some real high-end, you know, $60,000 server and workstation type hardware. So a lot going on for EK. Make sure you check back to Kikuru for more coverage of CES 2023.